The first time I picked up a pair of clippers, I was about 13 years old, and um, they were some cheap Walmart clippers. I, I believe they were Con Air, 10, 12 dollar pair of clippers. Um, the reason why I picked them up is because we couldn't afford to get our hair cut as frequently as we wanted to. At the time, the, the local barber shops that the, my peers were going to was the Great Clips, the Fantastic Sounds, the Dollar Cuts, um, and they weren't doing the best haircuts at the time. So my friends would ask me if I could cut their hair or fix their hair. So the development of my clientele came from, like it was built on the mistakes of other stylists and barbers because of their lack of uh, proper clipper cutting. When I turned 15 years old, I began to take it a little more seriously. I started to charge for the haircuts. I would charge anywhere from five to fifteen dollars, depending on the client. And uh, you know, before I knew it, I had you know 30, 40 clients, and I would perform the haircuts out of the garage. I mean, I turned the the, the garage into a barber shop. I would have lines of people waiting, and you know, I'm 15 years old, charging 10, 15 dollars a haircut, making a hundred dollars a day, you know, cash. And uh, at this time, my, my dad was getting out of jail, and he had no idea that I cut hair. So when he got out, he saw how many clients that I had, and he was like, you're cutting hair, and your uncles are all barbers, and your grandfather was a barber. So I had no idea that my dad's side of the family, you know, they're in Mexico. Um, so they were barbers. So I was third generation barber, I had no idea, and I picked it up at, you know, a young age. So I looked at barbering like a good uh, base or stepping stone um, for me to be financially independent and not have to work for somebody else, not have to uh, be told what to do, what time to be somewhere, um, you know, have to ask for vacation, ask for days off, and it was all up to me. I literally signed the lease to my barber shop before I graduated uh, barber school. This was about seven years ago, eight years ago, and there wasn't a uh, barbering program at the time that was, that was producing the type of barbers that I was looking for. And so I ended up closing the shop because I was the only one working. And uh, I went back to the house. I opened a barber shop in my house. That went on for about four, uh, three years, working out of my house until I was about 25. And then I started working in uh, barber shops. The types of barber shops that are out there, a good majority of them, you know, you have a lot of good barbers that have good skills, but a lot of them don't understand uh, a, a great experience. And if you want to get premium dollar for your haircut, you have to know how to give a great experience. And that's 50%, if not more, of the actual service. And I realized that in the barbering industry, there was a lack of education on service. So I decided to start a uh, barbering program, and that's what started this place. We made the place look and feel like a high-end barber shop, you know, something you're not going to see, you know, uh, in this side of town. One of the reasons why I've, you know, become uh, so successful, at least where I am right now, is because I believe that you get what you give, and so you know, our students they donate a lot of their time, uh, hoping helping the less fortunate. You know, we started a nonprofit by the name of Haircuts for Hope, and our students actually go out, they volunteer. Um, we perform haircuts at Pioneer Park, downtown Salt Lake, sometimes every week. And so, you know, we started with haircuts, and now we do food drives, clothing drives. It's inspired a lot of action between both our, ourselves, our students, and uh, other barber shops and other local stylists. We're now partnered with Volunteers of America. And so we go out to the detox centers, the rescue mission, road home, and we give our time, we donate our time and, and our services to helping those uh, less fortunate. Barbering is a really good outlet for people that want to become independent and free. I want to let them know that there's a way out. And barbering for me was that way out. This trade, you can take anywhere in the world. You can go Mexico, 
Canada, Europe. I mean, I've been offered jobs in Mexico, you know, in London, and uh, you know, I could just get up and go because uh, you know the, the the trade is that universal. The education that we bring, you know, hope to uh, inspire and change people's lives. My name is Fernando Petty. I'm 28 years old, and I am a master barber.